Thank you very much for having me here and for um, your willingness to come, some of you, to Bosnia to help us and uh, to listen and to talk about um, this. Um, first time when uh, people in Bosnia heard that uh, we do have some, some people who are uh, asylum seekers in Bosnia uh, was in January last year when the representatives of the Ministry of Security in Bosnia, which is somehow uh, responsible for asylum seekers, came out in the public uh, telling us, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. when the officials from the State uh, Ministry of Security came out in the public telling us that uh, one and the only asylum center that we have in Bosnia, uh, there are around 100 people inside and that uh, them had a big fight. And uh, the officials described the people who were in this asylum center uh, involved in some kind of fight. Uh, they described them as criminals, as uh, drug addicts, and as sick people. They told us Bosnian public, that these people run away from the camp, leaving uh, room, uh, rooms uh, covered with blood, and uh, that nobody knows where they are. That where they are. Two days after uh, this news, uh, I received a phone call from my friend that I uh, met in Sheed, and uh, Valid came and he called me, he said, I just arrived now, uh, can you please meet me somewhere? I'm very tired, I need help. And uh, he told me to come to one cafe uh, in the uh, suburbs of Sarajevo called Ilija. When I arrived there, it was around um, more than 50 uh, guys, uh, or let's guess, and they are uh, refugees or migrants uh, in Bosnia and uh, more than half of them were uh, these criminals and sick people who participated in the fight in asylum center. Uh, asylum center, uh, in the only one in Bosnia and Herzegovina, is placed uh, high up in the mountains. It was January, it's a mountain. It's extremely cold. Uh, it is 16 kilometers away from civilization, to call it like that, but that civilization is a gas station. They don't have internet, they don't have phone there, and they were left there and nobody in the country knew that they are there except Ministry of Security. Of course, after some time, a group of the, the, the people who were inside, they couldn't stand it anymore, and uh, probably there was some kind of fight. Uh, and we met these people in this cafe waiting for uh, us and over the next couple of months, uh, they lived in Sarajevo. Some of them are still stuck in Bosnia, some of them in Sarajevo, some of them in Kladuša, some of them in Bihać. Some of them are here in Slovenia. Uh, many uh, continued their journey, they're all over Europe. And uh, what we learned, me and my friends who came uh, to be with them uh, since that day, uh, every day until today, uh, that most of them were the nicest people that we could meet. Uh, extremely grateful uh, to, uh, to us, uh, not because we brought them something and they were in need, but because we were there with them. And that was very important uh, for me and for many locals in Sarajevo who, it's okay, just don't, it's okay. Even that sentence will be, will be enough. So for many people in Sarajevo, uh, just meeting, meeting them, um, was um, something that reminded us of our past uh, from 20 something years ago uh, when uh, Bosnia was in war. When Bosnia was in war and when more than two million people uh, had uh, to leave their countries and they became refugees all over the world. Many of them never came back and they will never come back. Uh, what they reminded us more than that, uh, that story uh, that is so old, more than 20 years ago, is that over 180,000 people left Bosnia after war. Most of them since 2014. So we are migrants. 
and we could see ourselves in these people that we met that day in Sarajevo. Since January until today, more and more people are coming every day in Bosnia. Uh, we reached uh, last year the number over 30,000, and only this year, uh, until the end of the last month, it was more than 10,000 people who entered Bosnia. They are coming uh, walking, uh, most of them from Montenegro, uh, many of them from Serbia. Uh, I met many people who came to Bosnia from Lesbos, who were in Moria for months, who uh, came from one hell to what uh, turned out to be another hell. And at the moment, I'm afraid that uh, that hell that is created in my country could be much worse than Moria. And we all know that Moria is one of the worst places in the earth at the moment. Now I will jump immediately from January last year to what is happening now, at this moment in Bihać. Zemira Gorinjac is like, like us in Sara, I have a group of locals. She is one of the first who reacted when people started coming. She was there with them every day. She's still there with them. She was the one who pushed the local government in the beginning last year to do something to help to people who started arriving in Bihać. And the local government back then reacted. However, with the time, this, uh, this discourse that I mentioned at the beginning that is coming from the state officials about people who are coming to Bosnia as illegals, as criminals, as drug addicts, as dangerous people, continued. Continued to that level that uh, Zemira Gorinjac today wrote this on uh, her Facebook account. She's afraid in Bihać. She's afraid of what is happening around. She's afraid of people from Bihać. She's afraid of police of Bihać. She's afraid of government of Bihać. I'm not afraid, I feel very uncomfortable. And uh, I feel ashamed also because of what is happening in Bosnia at the moment. And I will show you the pictures, how does that look like. These are the messages that people from Bosnia who are in constant in contact with the people who are living in camps that I don't call the camps, I call them concentration camps in Bosnia, we have that again after 20 something years, are sending to us. I will just leave you to read. This is all from the last four days. What they are talking about is about Camp Bira, where more than 2,000 people are living. They're forced to live inside, they're trapped inside. And since a couple of days ago, after a big fight that uh, happened in one of the camps, uh, police in Unasana Canton, uh, which is Bihać area, decided to close people inside of the camp. More than 2,000 people, including families, very small children, a lot of sick people, unaccompanied minor, just people are forced to stay inside of this camp. They cannot go out. That is what we call in Bosnia concentration camp. And we know what concentration camp is. If they try to go out, there is a police officer who are special police forces with the guns, with often with the, 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 the masks on their faces, uh, with the bulletproof jackets, and they treat them like worse criminals you can imagine. People are afraid because of this. People started believing what this person in January told us, that around us are criminals and some people who want to do something bad to us. And of course they will believe in that when these people are surrounded with the police who is heavily armed at that moment, and when their freedom of movement is restricted. More than anything, and that is something that I try to speak with representatives of UNHCR back in, um, in February, in March, when I was still ready to speak with UNHCR or IOM or anybody in Bosnia, 
is when the moment when the camps were created in Bosnia, for many of us, were triggered, were moment of re-traumatization. It reminded us of the war, we, of genocide we survived. In Bosnia, more than 10,000, much more than 10,000 people were kept in concentration camps during the war from 1992 to 1995. Inside of these camps, people were beaten up, people were killed, people were raped. I have to say that inside of the camps, which IOM and UNHCR created in Bosnia and Herzegovina, that they are running and that they are paying private security to, 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 to guard the place, people are being raped, people are being brutally beaten up, and people are deprived of their freedom. People are hungry inside. We know many, many very young people who are really, really hungry. And then local people in Brihaj, they are buying food and bringing them food. Now, over the last three, two or three days, they cannot do even that. In Kladusha, the situation is not much better, but I focus on on Bihać in this moment. I will also try, I hope it will be okay, to play a um, video from, from, from what authorities in Bihać call solution. Solution is take them out of the city, impose curfew, restrict freedom of the movement, and take them to jungle. This is Vučjak, a place where they want to create a camp for refugees. Islam, this place for refugee, and uh, this is very bad situation here. Many, many guys uh, injured, and this it is, is very bad place. And no have here facilities, and every person in much problem, big problem. We have no food. We have. You see, this, this is my, our house, and here I have much water, downside water, many snakes, dangerous, and this is, this for, this is shower, very bad condition, and this, you see this all, this all, this is for water, this water, this water, this, after this water go down, go down this water, and This water going in this here home and after night no good. Here people sleep. This is very bad condition, very bad condition. This is very, and this snake, there are many snakes like this. There are much problem, we have no food, we have not market, and all the guys very, in big problem. What's the leg? Sapu Mukhaya? 
This is allergic problem and many all most mostly guys this this like mostly uh, guys involved in this situation this is very bad condition well, this is how this uh, police police bosnia police yes. oh and uh, you back you sh show me oh shit Some and other help. Stick. Stick. Yes. Stick. Yes. Okay. Punch. 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 Here. Punch. And this stick. Stick. And stick. All. Bosnia police. Yes. Bosnia police in going center. Huh? And fight me. Okay. Guys, this is situation. No have market. No have food. Good. This Red Cross give only two time food and just two bread and with some another thing. This is very dangerous area. Because all the forest and no have toilet, no have food. All the people helpless. All the people helpless. We need help. This is disaster. This exists because the European Union don't want people to come anymore. They try to stop them with the border police violence at the borders of the EU. They're beating up people in Greece. They're beating them up in Bulgaria. They're beating them up in Romania. They're beating them up in Hungary. They're beating them up in Slovenia. They're beating them up in Croatia. It didn't work. They continued. Then they said, okay, there is that crazy country that is not a state, which is just a vacuum, and which is just semi-protectorate for over the 20 years. People there are deeply traumatized by the war. People there are half crazy, and we are, all of us. Let them do what they want to do. Let them make, be afraid of people who are coming to their country. Create conditions that are unbearable for all of them, locals and those who are coming, and let them do whatever they want to do. And they're doing it. They're beating them up badly. It will be even worse. We, together, asylum seekers and locals, are desperate. State of Bosnia and Herzegovina is one of the poorest countries in Europe, one of the poorest countries in the world, among 10 countries who are the poorest countries in the world, all the other countries are African countries. We have the highest unemployment rate among youth, the highest in the world. So not even one of the countries of the pe where people are coming from have a higher unemployment rate than Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's over 60%. General unemployment is the highest in Europe. When I say Europe, unlike many people who live in European Union, for me it's not only European Union, I'm also European. It's the highest in Europe because there is more countries outside of the European Union. It's over 35%. We are poor, we are hungry, we are desperate. We have the worst politicians you can imagine. Probably only people who are migrating toward the European Union understand what does it mean. It means that they are corrupted, that they are liars, that they are criminals. 
European Union decided to leave these people to corrupted criminals who are ready to kill everybody just to keep on their power. They are ready to kill their own citizens. They will not hesitate to do anything to these people. They call them illegal. They claim that they don't know their identity. They claim that they have no idea who are the people around us. They claim that they are sick. They claim that they are criminals. And they claim that they came here to do something bad to all of us. People in Bosnia are afraid. People in Bosnia need help. More than anything, people in Bosnia need solidarity. This solidarity will not come with IOM. This solidarity is not coming with UNHCR. IOM and UNHCR are killing solidarity, and they're very successful in Bosnia, together with the local politicians who are working with them. We have an issue of many international volunteers coming to Bosnia. They didn't come with the solidarity. They came to cooperate with IOM and UNHCR, and they very often show us that they are better than we are and better than people who are in Bosnia. It doesn't feel good. At the same time, I have to say that something like this makes me feel ashamed. And even in this moment, I'm, I, feel, I feel very, very bad because this is something that is coming from my country. But at the same time, I have to say that Bosnia people are not like their government is. And I believe that most of the people, even in European Union, are not uh, as their governments are. What we can do in Bosnia, for us, it's very hard to protest. Because at the same time in Bosnia, you have hungry workers who are on the streets. You have mothers who do not have protection for their children who are on the streets. You have I mean, so many problems that we just cannot go out even for this. And even if we do, nobody will listen to us. So what we do? We believe in solidarity. We invite people to share homes with us. We do not have problem with that. We, we accept them as a friends who are coming and we understand each other. The question that we often get from people who are now in Bosnia is when, when we will leave because they see that nobody can live in that country. Recently, I was in Tuzla. Tuzla is a transit city where people, when they come from Serbia, enter the Bosnia. That's the first big city when they come. In Tuzla, so many people are on the streets. They're waiting for people who are coming. They're cooking for them. Every day it has to be meat, because in Bosnia we believe that the meal without meat is not a meal at all. So they're feeding them with meat even when they don't want to meat, because they believe it's good for them to eat meat. They prepare, like during the Ramadan, every day, people from Tuzla were not only there for Iftar, which is around 8 o'clock in the evening this year, but they were there for Sehur, which is 2 o'clock in the morning. And they didn't even only bring them a meal, they shared the meal with them. They had the Sehur together with people who came to Tuzla on that day. Even today, Tuzla is full of people. They have more than 100 people arriving a day. And they are still there. They are cooking for them. After Tuzla, they come to Sarajevo. We try to be good hosts. It's not easy. Because Sarajevo is different cities, capital city. So it's, it, 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 it's a different, um, different um, kind of rhythm that, that the city has. But still, all over the city, there are many people who open their doors. And they accepted uh, people who, who arrived to country. We have, I have many friends who, who have whose new best friends are people from Morocco, Morocco, Algeria, Syria, anywhere. Last year, we registered, Bosnian government registered people from 67 different nationalities in Bosnia. We have Yazidi people, people, we have Rohingya people, we have people from Bhutan, we have people from India, we have people from Nepal, we have people from Cuba, we have people from everywhere. Unfortunately, Bosnian government, IOM, and UNHCR are telling us that only people from Pakistan are there. And for some reason that I don't understand, people from Pakistan seems to be do not have basic human rights in Pakistan, but also when they come to Europe. And that's also painful, and that's not true also. But after all, it doesn't matter. It's just people coming to my country, and they need, and they deserve, and they have to receive dignified human and um, friendly 
to be, to be accepted in that way. They are not. People are still coming. Uh, many people decided to stop because Bosnia crashed their dreams. Bosnia crashed all our dreams of Bosnian citizens long time ago. And it also feels bad. It also feels very bad. Now many people go back. They go back the same way as they arrived. So they go back, most of them go back to Serbia, then from Serbia, they try to reach many of them Greece again. Uh, I'm very happy because some of them uh, are making uh, and uh, every day that they're, they're still finding a way to cross uh, into the European Union, dreaming of European Union as a, as a place where they will be safe and where it will be good for them. Unfortunately, we all know it will not, at least not that easy. And uh, while the last year, many of the people who came to Bosnia, they were telling us that uh, Bosnian people are the best people they met on their very long journeys, that they feel well in Bosnia, that it's nice, that they understand that we are poor and that they, they, they don't mind uh, even, even how they live. This year, they started, started hating us. And, uh, and it doesn't feel good. It just doesn't feel good. I hope something will change soon. Uh, however, like recently when I went to Tuzla, I met one lady who is also part of the Solidarity Network and she was there sitting with four boys from um, Algeria. And they were laughing and I said like, what are you laughing about? Like, what are you talking about? And she said, we uh, just place a bet who will leave Bosnia first, they or me? So I will see, I'm also not sure if all the people who are now in Bosnia will leave the country before I will leave. And I want to leave because I really, really, really feel ashamed at this moment of what the government is doing, but also because it's just not country for anybody. That's a state created by the international intervention. That is what the international community is doing to a poor country after the war and to people who are deeply traumatized and who need help. They left us alone and they will do it again not only to us, but also to people who are now on the move, just dreaming about something that will be better for their life. So I hope we will not kill all their dreams and that they will still have enough courage and um, resilience in themselves to keep dreaming. We in Bosnia, we don't dream for a very long time. Thank you very much. Solidarnost is um, actually a very religious group. This is from Tuzla. And this is in Tuzla in one house. Where one woman took 12 guys to live inside of her house. <laughs> they don't pay, don't worry, but she don't have enough space. But everybody's happy here. So I love to finish with this picture. It's kind of like, looks kind of happy. <laughs> um, uh, solidarity is a very religious, uh, Islamic religious group, but very group of really, really nice women, which is interesting in a Bosnian case, but also all over the region, uh, even in Serbia, and uh, I think even in Croatia, most of the people who are involved in this solidarity network are led or uh, initiated by women. So it's solidarity, but over the time, uh, many grassroots groups kind of like the, were born in Bosnia, and they are not formal, nothing. Like what we were doing in Sarajevo, we just we go out and then whoever comes, that person is with us at that moment, and then we started like building network out of these people. The same is in Tuzla. There was one guy, Nihad, he was the first one to go, uh, to, go to the train station, bus station, where people are arriving, and then just people saw him there, and they started coming. So like, um, Three weeks ago, I, th I think it was still Ramadan, so maybe even more, and it was like very beautiful. People from villages around Tuzla, when uh, people start coming uh, across the river from, uh, from Serbia, enter Bosnia, they have to pass through many villages. These villages are the same, and those who are from former Yugoslavia, you will know, 
if somebody needs explanation, I, I, I can explain. In 1995, in Bosnia, uh, genocide uh, was committed in one small city called Srebrenica. Uh, over the seven days, 8,000 people were killed, massacred. And uh, those who, who managed to escape, uh, they used exactly the same routes as people who are entering from Serbia today to Bosnia used. So they passed through the same villages in, in the part of Federacia, one part of Bosnia, where the Srebrenica people passed. And I went to Sapna, one of these villages, and they told me the first time when they realized what, what is happening was um, last year when 100, more than 120 people came the same day uh, to Sapna, and they were tired and, of course, lying everywhere around the ground. And they, uh, one woman, she told me, and I opened the window and I saw people of Srebrenica. So for many of them, and that's what I'm talking, it's re-traumatizing, and they react, they're coming out, they're bringing food. So you cannot see that in media, because Bosnian media are under the control of the local politicians. They go out, they react, they bring food, they bring them out, uh, in their houses, and like recently it was very beautiful because there is one village uh, close to Tuzla called Puracic, and they invited uh, all the uh, refugees and migrants, people on the move, who were that day in Tuzla, they told the local uh, solidarity network, bring them all. As not doesn't matter how many, bring them all. So they all went to this Puracic, and this is like really Bosnian village, where women are dressed still very traditionally, and men and everything, and everything is like totally, it, it's, it's a funny, it's in a way romantic. The whole event ended up with <laughs> all the people on the move and the local people, dancing in Kolo, <laughs> which is kind of, that is, that is a welcoming atmosphere. It was very, you know, very, just people, people reacting to people. And that's the most beautiful thing about Bosnia at this moment, that still many people, and they're not organized, they're not NGOs who are involved, but they're just people who react to other people. And that's, I think that's, 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 that's the best, but I'm not sure for how long uh, we will manage uh, to continue, we do not have donations. We are not, we, we don't have anything basically. What we have is what we collect among ourselves and what, when we go like, I don't know, in Sarajevo also like in the train station, there is a Cevapcin, it's a place where you can eat Cevapi. They feed every day more than 100 people, just for that, for nothing. They don't ask for anything. So as long as, as these small companies can continue supporting what is happening in this way, but that the same thing is in Bihaj, the same thing is, is in Kladusha, everywhere around. It's just local people on their own together with their friends. So I cannot really talk about the groups. I can talk about friends helping friends. So my name is Irfan Hoshic, and I am university teacher in Bihaj. Um, uh, well, I just needed to give a small reflection and uh, uh, about it's very complex situation uh, in whole Bosnia related to to to, to migrants and and refugees. Um, I had recently one example. Uh, one of my students, she is from the region of Tuzla, so she decided to move to to Bihać for 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 studying. And just to give you brief um, feeling, what is the medical and health insurance situation in the country she is not covered so we are within the same country her health insurance is not covered at the medical institution in Bihać just because she is from different canton so let's say different small sub-region sub -region. Uh, Maybe it is necessary to mention that both those cantons, which I'm from, Unasana Canton, and her canton, which is Tuzla Canton, are both ethnically the same, let's say. So they are not even from different ethnically um, uh, uh, dominated cantons. So there is a huge paradox and huge absurd situation, not only on the level of medical issues, but all issues that you can imagine in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, this is, uh, Nijara just said very perfectly, gave uh, 
brief and sufficient uh, contextualization of Bosnian situation. We have officially three presidents. We are a country with three ethnical dominated constituted groups, Croats, Serbs, and uh, Bosniaks. And um, in a daily political discourse, uh, the politicians are using officially pro-fascistic, um, pro-fascist uh, discourse. Not only related to migrants and refugees, but this is a daily schedule in Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is when you just open the TV, the fascistic discourse is just going on, and people, the citizens of Bosnia, are not only traumatized with the war, but they are very, very traumatized with the war, they are mobbed and traumatized with the post-war and post-genocide situation. It is very, very complex and very different situation in Croatia, in Slovenia, and more further northern you go, the difference and the gap is bigger. Um, well, that would be that I wanted to say. Um, Yes. I just want to add. Maybe you can also go. Get back. Well, yeah. I don't feel good here. Uh, I just want to find a name for what you was talking now when you say it is very really complicated. It is everywhere is very really complicated. Also here is very. Really Not as in Bosnia. Yeah. Not as in Bosnia, in, uh, please. In uh, Bosnia is apartheid. Yes. It is. It is yes. not complicated. Here is complicated. Okay, but, very good. But in Bosnia, it is the only country with apartheid, with a living apartheid. Mm -hmm. And I think it is very, it is very important to say that this country is by force pushed in apartheid. And when, when you think, uh, when you talk about uh, medical insurance. Let me add to this that we were uh, talking about uh, making networks of doctors who will help people, Bosnian doctors, no, not this, what I now try, what we now try from Iran, but then we learned that doctor from Canton, say Sarajevo, cannot work in Canton, US Cup. So it is absolutely absurd. So there is people from other countries who would like to come to work, but it, yeah. is, it is not possible. That is part of this paradox or part of apartheid. Mm -hmm. Can I j just to explain like, how Bosnia, so because I it's confusing for some people. To, great, and to great. discourage you, you right. immediately, you will never get permission to work in Bosnia. Why? Because uh, Bosnia is a country uh, with, uh, as uh, Irfan said, we have three presidents. We have two entities, one district. Inside of one entity, there is 14, uh, 10 cantons. Health is on the cantonal level and entity level. In order for you to get permission you cannot go to the state level. There is nothing for you at the state level. You have to go to these 12. There is no way all 12 will agree about to you. Uh, Bosnia has the highest number of um, people working in uh, state administration in Europe. Uh, we have more than 160 ministers. All of them are paid the same as ministers or politicians in Europe, even though Bosnia is one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, everything is very divided, and when, when, uh, when doctor talked about the apartheid, apartheid is something uh, is imposed to Bosnia in 1996, so we don't have constitution, we don't have anything, we have peace agreement. Inside of the peace agreement, we have constitution. But that's not a real constitution, but that's a part of peace agreement. And until today, we live in accordance with peace agreement, which stopped the war in 1995. So it doesn't have anything to do with the real life in Bosnia. It's just to stop the war. And the, the intention was stop the war and then let them build, build the state. Until today, we didn't make it, because in 1995, with the peace agreement, 
they uh, created the first, and until today, the only semi-protectorate in Europe. What semi-protectorate means is that officially, we do have a government, we have elections, we have all that shit that is coming with that. Obviously, we have 160 ministers, so we have more than, than enough of that. But at the same time, we have international community. We have a body called Office of the High Commission, uh, representative, representative, sorry, and he has ultimate power in Bosnia. It's called bone powers because we were not good enough for them to meet in Bosnia after the war, but they were like going around the world and meeting like in Lisbon and da 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 da. So they went even to Bonn and in Bonn they agreed that in Bosnia we will have a foreigner from European Union always who can do whatever he wants. It was always he, never she. Whatever he wants means that he can suck any politician and adding even a moment for any position. So it can be elected person, and it was in the past. They sucked a couple of people who were elected as a president of the state. They can impose or change any law Bosnia has. The law that we have, the law of as an asylum, was written and imposed in Bosnia by UNHCR. It is not a law written by local people, but the UNHCR, and now we live that law. The problem is that there is only one person in Bosnia who is responsible for all asylum seekers. Since 2004, when Bosnia took over from UNHCR the question of asylum seekers, only one person decided on everything, not even one asylum was issued. It's very small number of refugee statuses that were given, very small no number of uh, subsidiary protection that was given, asylum, zero. Even over the last two years, zero asylums. Not even Syrians in Bosnia are, can get asylum. Nobody can get asylum in Bosnia. I met that lady last June in June when, when um, Sidali, my friend from Morocco, he lost uh, this asylum seeker paper, so we went to the ministry because I was like so boring, so I didn't want to speak with UNHCR, but I wanted to speak with somebody in my government. And I met the lady in a room covered with the papers, and then she was very, very nice. And then she kind of like called me and she said, I have to tell you something, but please, this is off the record that I never respected, basically. And she said, I don't know how to implement this law. And she don't know. And she's the only one. There is nobody she can ask. They don't know how to implement the laws that were imposed in Bosnia. And at the same time, we have judiciary system that collapsed completely because all the judges and all the main prosecutors are people who are close to political parties in Bosnia. And you, you can't do anything. All the heads of every single fucking hospital in Bosnia is a person that is close to some political party. Even the directors and heads of the theaters in Bosnia are people that are close to political parties. If you want to be teacher in Bosnia, you have to be close to political party. There is no other way. If you are not, or if you are not member, like I am not member, I, I'm not one of the three constituent people. I'm not Serb, I'm not Croat, I'm not Bosniak. In my country, I don't have political rights. I can never ever, not that I want to be, but I can never ever be elected politician in my country because I'm not Serb, I'm not Croat, I'm not Bosniak. In my country, I do not exist. I do exist, I have citizenship and everything, but I do not have political rights, whatever. I mean, maybe that's too broad, but basically, yeah. Basically, I don't exist there. I, 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 I just live there. And I have that citizenship that is not very, very valuable. So it's very complicated. And Irfan is right, it's too complicated. And situation related to migrants and refugees will be much worse very soon in Bosnia. That so is, if. It's a matter of days. Yes, it, it, it's already happening. Just a few days ago, it started to be, in Bihać, started to be uh, the situation radically changed. I don't know if we have time to open that side of the story. It's very also, I'm not a pro proper observer because from my perspective, it's very complicated. But the state doesn't exist. Uh, authorities doesn't have capacities neither they had it ever for any other issue to solve 
even 5% of the challenges that are approaching. So uh, may, I don't want to be, you know, um, like theoria zaveri, um, se kaže, like conspiracy theorists, but during the war, this is already obvious that the genocide, genocide was possible uh, with, the, um, uh, with, with the, how to say, uh, lack of intervention of United Nations. So they, the, the United Nations were part of the genocide somehow. And it's in the, in the, in the uh, war, uh, in the, in a, um, uh, uh, in, in, the, in, in yeah, Hague. International Criminal Court. International Criminal, Criminal for Tribunal for, for, for yes. Uh, the, 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 the Dutch soldiers were accused for participating in that genocide. And uh, we are just approaching the same scenario, but just on the different level. United Nations are doing something, but very bad with very weak country and very weak society. So that would be. And they are not accountable for that. I don't know, do you know in Slovenia, but you cannot take United Nations to the court, or IOM, or any of the UN agency. We tried. People from Slavonia tried. They never made it. You cannot take them to the court. They can do whatever they want, but you cannot take them. And because that's very positive, no? <laughs> my, my interest is uh, uh, maybe um, I don't know about uh, well situation uh, with uh, refugees stranding in Bosnia or kept like they are kept now in closed camps in YRM might, might be wor worse than it, right? But it will not go negotiate the position. Definitely. Yes, definitely. Because now Frontex is working in Albania. Right? So because you know they will not allow in any case if there is already in a Syrian philosophy, as you showed in your movie. And I hope so they will not allow this kind of things going on. So in order to prevent this kind of things, they will close Greek Albanian border. Because this is the border that is so, and then the people will be coming like Turkey, Bulgaria, yeah, from Bulgaria, as Hadi was explaining today. So, so, so there are still, uh, there are still, there will be still routes open to come to Europe, but these routes are shrinking, yeah. And on the other side, it's very paradoxical. The European Union wants to extend itself. So in order to extend itself, it should need some uh, securitization. And this securitization should go southern, southern. So they want desperately Croatia to become a part of Schengen. Mm -hmm. Once Croatia is in Schengen, there won't be, and hopefully this wire, so the Slovenia Croatian border. We don't know yet, but okay, let's see. So, well, let's just imagine that that point, it will be a little bit easier to cross at least for the immigration border, right? Because there won't be hot roads like now, because it's only 570 kilometers, and it's all wired, and there are no border crossing points, and all, and all, and all this. So, uh, this is it. But on the other side, uh, I just want to say, uh, please don't think about your non-existent state in such a way, although I think we are aware of, this, of political consequences, existential consequences of the war, but maybe Bosnia reacted the best for one year, right? So one year people were everywhere, people were welcomed, and now, because people are coming in more numbers, because you know, the rumors are spread. Once people are in Bihanj, and in the next five days they are in Italy, they send SMS to a friend saying, yes, I did it, and friend stops coming. So this, this will be probably prohibited by European Union on Albanian side. We will see. Um, no, we have, that's that's lucky part about Bosnia. We have more than 1,000 kilometers of border in Croatia. They just cannot close all that. And it's yeah. all mountains, rivers, and blah, blah, blah. So I hope more people will come and more people will, will find their way. And 
if you ask me and my friends, everybody is welcome and we are waiting for them and we will do our best to welcome these people. But yeah, but that's what I wanted to tell you. <laughs> when, I, when I was coming here yesterday to Slovenia, uh, on my surprise, but the border police uh, asked me why am I coming here, how long I will be here, what I'm going to do here, and blah, blah, which is very unusual because at least for these three months I'm free. Uh, so it seems to be I'm not, uh, and it's getting harder and harder for Bosnians to, to, to go out. However, because I am what I am, so I was like very angry because they are doing that, and I said, I want to complain. And they said like, but, but where? I, I don't know, I don't care, I want to complain. So they took me somewhere, and I went, went there to complain, and it was very interesting, because on, on the entrance of that space where I entered, it was written Frontex. So I was like, oh, look, I'm going to Frontex. And then, for whatever reason, I was like waiting there to complain. And the people were kind of like gathering there and some also some guys, everybody dressed in civilians came and they started talking, having no idea who I am there. They're from Frontex, Slovenian Frontex, they're in Slovenia, in uh, Montenegro. That's something that I didn't know. It's not official because officially Frontex is only in Albania, uh, Greece border, but seems to be no, they are going and even more, seems to be that the border police officer, but because I understood among them, there are three people from Bosnia who are border police officer. They came uh, for the Frontex kind of like education or whatever. So seems to be that it will be much even up, so somewhere uh, near, near Montenegro. Luckily, we have crazy president, Milorad Dodik, and he said no to Frontex. He's a na too nationalistic to accept foreigners around him. So. Hopefully they will listen. I cannot believe that I'm on Milorad Dodik's side, but yeah, I support Milorad Dodik at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but maybe, I'm sorry for saying this, but I will tell you this. Why you are so upset that they are asking you this certain type of questions? Where are you going? Where will you sleep? Yeah, because you are a Bosnian. You are a third national country citizen. And you are entering fortress Europe, the European Union, and you will be always asked this question. So it's not like, you know, imagination. <laughs> if you have a liberal visa regime for both years, for six months in a year, it doesn't mean that you are the part of the European Union, you know? You will be always asked until you get a better citizenship. Citizenship of European Union, right? <laughs> I'm not good enough. What can I do? And I talk too much. <laughs> As one citizen of the European Union who was very pissed with me, like when we met in Greece for the first time, and then after she was like listening, listening, and blah, 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 whatever, I was like, I, I was oppo opposition to everything she said there because she was like really annoying. And then I tried to explain to her that I don't like that. And she said, what you are saying here is feminist anarchist shit. And I said, yeah, that's me. <laughs>